Hello, this is me, Samuel Lambros, and then I'm loving it because we are doing the practical example to show how the system is developed and how the system works. Now that we have written our program, we are compiling it. So I wanted to show you how compiler works in the, in the previous video, but I just gave you the definition of compiler. Compiler, like it turns the algorithm or the written program in the human language to the machine code or machine language, but it has to go through stages. So let us see all the stages of compiling, and that is what this video is all about. So the first thing is we write our code in the human language. You know, that is the function there we have written in the human language, but that human language we are writing it in Java. You know, we have written it like you can read because Java, that J Java is a user friendly. You can read all the syntax in Java and understand, you know. Now, after writing that, we need to compile it. So you compile the Java code that you've written using a command called Java app, you know, Java compiler, Java C. So this is saying that we have a Java program. We have a program written in Java language. Now we need to compile it. So compiling is about turning this uh, this program we have, written, we have written in Java into bits, but it has to go through some process. So once that has been compiled, because compiler will take this program written in the source code. This, this is our source code. The source code is written in the human language, but in the Java term, in the Java language. Is written in a human, I would say English language, but in, in Java, in Java perspective. We are using Java technology. So when we compile, we divert, we change all this into what is called the bytecode, which is a string of numerical values and con uh, constants. These numerical values and constants create what is called the virtual machine as well for the Java. You see? So we now have to convert this one into the byte, into the bit, bit code. So remember, we have a source code, which is the system that we have written, compiled into the byte code, which is a string of numbers and values. And then this byte code contains a virtual machine, which interpret this byte code into the bits that machine can run. This one now will be run in the processor of, of the, the computer system. And this can run now in any other operating system because you have already compiled. You've got the bytecode, which is uh, the class file. If, for example, the file name was Java, I mean, let's say um, uh, sum.java, um, here we compile it, it will be sum dot class because it has to have a class file the file extension is class this one is java this is class and then from there the, the virtual machine will handle the work to turn the code the byte code into the bit the bit code remember the bit code now everything will be zero one zero one zero but from here things are in a massive string of numbers you know but not readable by human but the machine, the virtual machine can be able to read it, uh, interpret it, uh, change it to be compatible with any operating system. And then once you put in any system, it will be changed from here to bits, and then it will run in the hardware as the binary instruction. So all this function that we have written there will run as the binary in, in, in instruction to interact with the hardware. From here, that binary instruction is actually where now things are in bits, in electrical pulse, you know. You know, there's a flip-flop circuit inside the circuit board that will now take this instruction, group them according to how you program it, and then the magic now occurs inside the processor there. So, my friend, that is going to be our next video. We are going to see the step-by-step -step process of how this thing is processed inside the processor in order to get our output which is yellow
So I hope this video has been informative and I hope you will like it when we get to the next stage. So what to take home from here is the kind of codes we have when you're compiling the source code. So once you've written a program, let's say in Java or any other programming language, I know some other programming languages may not need to be compiled. You know, they have like uh, auto, auto compilation, for example, the web programming languages, but with, with object oriented programming languages like C, C++, Python and things like that, you, you know, Python, you may not even, you don't even need to compile Python, but the system compiles it, we, you know, we you just run it. That's why Python is also portable. But with Java, Java is a heavy duty, uh, object oriented uh, programming language. And I recommend that you learn Java because once you know Java, any other programming languages will be very simple and easy for you, not only to learn, but to use it as well. So what to take home from here is the source code, which is the program we have written. And those comprises of those function or function or function, yeah, with a class file, obviously. And then when you compile it, it will create a bytecode. Bytecode contains numerical values and constant code, but is not readable by human. And that contains the virtual machine in Java. Java virtual machine, you know, and this virtual machine is like an interpreter, you know, it's like a converter. It, 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 it interprets this one and changes it into the bit code. You see, bit code is the machine code. The machine codes is full of binary instruction or hexadecimal instruction, which is just based to hexadecimal uh, binary, hexadecimal system. But binary would, would not be enough for, for machine learning to, 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 to be realized the way we are realizing machine and artificial intelligence nowadays. So the bit code, take note of source code, byte code, and the bit code. Source code is what you write. Byte code is what comes after compiling. And then bit code is the bits everything is in bit zero one zero one zero one which is basically um, done by the java virtual machine we translate the byte code into the bits that must that the system can now understand to start getting the binary instructions in order to interpret our function so thank you for viewing i hope this video has been informative and i'm loving it